now we're going to have a session by uh, the Board of Trustees uh, of the Wikimedia Foundation. The title is Connecting the Dots, our work in the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. It's going to be a panel uh, held by Natalia, Shani, and Vicky, who are all uh, members of the Board of Trustees. Uh, if you're ready, I think we can start. Thanks very much. And uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, thanks for joining us. We um, Is Vicky already here? Nat, were you able to, to bring her? No? Uh, okay, so we're hoping that uh, Vicky will join us in a second. But we basically um, thought when we saw the schedule that it's a good chance to, to have an informal chat with the community, maybe share a bit about what the board is doing these days and um, uh, just have an open platform to answer questions. So uh, with that in mind, I think I'll ask Nat, uh, who, as you all know, is our current chair. Uh, very exciting. And um, Nat, do you want to start by maybe um, sharing a bit uh, about updates from what we've been doing recently and how the board maybe is structured. Maybe there are some folks here that don't have that context, so that will be helpful. Hello, everyone. Um, so I am Nat Tunkiv, Natalia Tunkiv, for those who don't know me. Uh, I'm a Ukrainian Wikipedian. And I am also currently now the chair of the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. And um, so I, before I give a few updates about the board work, um, I'm also go going to set some level of expectations for the session. Uh, we are individual board members at this uh, session, so we do not have the power to promise anything on behalf of the board or on behalf of the Wikimedia Foundation. We are, of course, going to um, uh, try to answer your questions, uh, especially if they are in the, in, uh, in the scope of our activities. And if no, uh, then just like with any other conversations with the board, uh, we would try to uh, find the, the answers to your questions and maybe post them in writing or something. So. Um, just for you to know that we are not experts on everything. Uh, we are the board members of uh, one organization, even if a very influential organization in the Wikimedia world. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, we just had our uh, board uh, meeting finished um, uh, in the middle of uh, October. And we have four uh, well, we have three new trustees uh, selected through the uh, community selection process, and we reappointed uh, Darius uh, Yemaniak to the uh, board of trustees. Oops. Uh, can anyone hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I guess. So Yes, so we now have new trustees and also, so we are uh, onboarding them. We also have an incoming CEO joining us in January and she uh, she greeted all of you on Friday. Um, also, we have uh, changed a bit of the structure of the board. Uh, we are going to be already have an executive committee and we also uh, changed a bit the scope of the committees that we have. Uh, at the moment, um, I'm going to explain about this in details if anyone is interested later, if we have the questions, uh, questions about that. Um, overall, that's what we were up to in uh, internally. Uh, we also had uh, uh, statements about media enterprise um, recently and uh, brand resolutions and um, uh, I sent a very detailed letter to Wikimedia L with the results of the board meeting. Um, I want to mention that the board minutes usually take a lot of time to publish uh, because um, 
there is a structural, so to say, problem. Uh, our board meetings are very extensive. It's a few hours. For example, we met through like four days uh, for four hours. Uh, they are very extensive and uh, the staff needs to work on them in order for them to be um, reflecting what has happened, uh, but also not putting that this trustee said this or this said this. So this should be like a readable document and also legal document. So we usually approve it at our next board meeting, um, which takes like uh, up to three months. So that's why we decided to move to a, uh, communicating about the outcomes of the meeting with the resolutions published and explaining what has happened to Wikimedia L, uh, just to give people the understanding of what has happened. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into more um, updates <laughs> about this. Um, over to you, Shani. Yeah, um, just um, expanding a bit on what Nat just said. Um, again, for those who may be less familiar with the board, maybe worth mentioning that the board is operating via different committees. And uh, Nat already mentioned that we have a new committee now, but uh, maybe we should give Nat an overview of the different committees and who's the chair of each committee. Uh, would that be helpful for people or is everyone here familiar with it? We're trying to go with the flow of what, what people actually want to hear about. So please feel free to, uh, to tell us in the chat. Or you can also raise a hand if you want to yes. come. So maybe we'll just briefly mention that there is um, an overview would be nice. Okay, so Nat, do you want to give the, the overview of the different committees and the different chairs? And, and then I'll take it and maybe note something about the CAC and... Uh, yeah. Um, there is a question about us uh, posting a link to Meta. Uh, again, uh, updating the information on Meta is uh, time-consuming activities. We are still working out how it and who needs to be responsible for that, uh, because again, it like mentions lots of um, lots lots of times uh, old uh, or uh, outdated committees are going to be mentioned on Meta. So um, that's why I can't at the moment give you the link to the right page, but I'm going to name our committees, uh, what we have now. Um, we changed the uh, name of the board governance committee to just governance committee. That's like a small one, uh, just in name. Uh, but we also changed the name of the, uh, uh, the scope of the committees. We are trying to make um, all the charters of uh, committees be almost the same in structure. Um, Shani, I need to <laughs> answer the call to the door. Could you please take it over for a minute? Sure. So uh, I'll do the, the overview of, of the different committees. So there are some very basic committees that usually every board has. One is the audit committee, uh, which is now chaired by Tanya. Um, and, um, and she's doing it in collaboration with our CFO, Jaime, at the Wikimedia Foundation. And um, besides that, there is the board uh, governance committee, um, and that is now chaired by Dariush. And uh, other committees that we have is the product and technology committee that is chaired by ISRA and the community affairs committee, which is chaired by me. We also have a special projects committee that is um, now chaired by Jimmy. And um, we have some. These are the five biggest, right? So governance, board, uh, audit, gov, uh, BGC, product, CC, and Nat, am I missing anything? Special projects? HR. 
Oh, and HR, my... right. So we have HR committee, which is again, a fairly regular committee to have in, in boards chaired by Raju. And um, we also have, the board is also liaising. So we are, we have uh, Nat and I as liaisons to the FD, to, to the, um, sorry, to AFCO. And um, there is a liaising of Nat now with the language, um, right, Nat? Language committee, sort of. And we have Isra as the liaison to the um, elections committee. And I think, I think that's it. Did we miss anything? Other than that, the board may also have um, ad hoc committees. So these are committees that would open for a specific amount of time, like the brand committee uh, that I was the chair of and just finished its uh, year long uh, work. And uh, as Nat mentioned, what is happening now uh, that is kind of new and part of a bigger plan that the board had to um, to have, we have a, a board evolution plan. So we are, always working in um, doing our board board work internally better. So part of the evolution plan is to open an executive committee. So basically the chairs of each of the committees that exist are in a sense coming together. And this committee, maybe Nat can expand more on that, but this committee is not about, um, it's not like having a board within a board. That's not the idea at all but it's more of having a platform for all the different chairs to discuss and make uh, some high level um, brainstorming together, making sure that a knowledge is not just sitting with the chair or the vice chairs, um, which by the way are now, Nat is the, the, the chair, I am the vice chair and Isra is the second vice chair. And so we, we just want things to be, um, a bit more transparent, even internally. And so the executive committee is going to help us do that. And Nata, I'll pause here to see if you have anything that you want to add on the executive committee. Um, yeah, so we haven't met as an executive committee as of now. Um, we're just starting to work on that in preparation for having a 16 um, member uh, uh, board. Um, it's a lot of people and they're doing it some coordination. So this is mostly like not making a decision, but uh, really coordinating how um, each committee works in order to make sure that if there is some matter and uh, for example, it shouldn't go just to one committee, it should be worked in a uh, few committees. Like, uh, I don't know, for example, the committee enterprise, it connects to audit because it's about money at the moment. Uh, it also uh, connects to com community affairs committee because it um, uh, also connects to uh, community, how community communication is going to happen around that. Uh, also governance can be, you know, uh, so we, we do need that like additional layer of um, how to coordinate stuff better. And um, there was a question in the chat about uh, advisors, volunteer advisors in the committees. So uh, the board, um, was developing alongside the Wikimedia Foundation. And it happened so that some committees were created uh, during different times of period uh, of uh, uh, different times. So uh, what we are trying to do now is to actually make sure that all committees can have uh, volunteer advisors, staff support, and all other things. So that it doesn't depend whether the committee was created like three years ago or whether it was created like uh, from the beginning. Um, so we are working on that, that every community can have um, volunteer advisory members. Um, and uh, then it would be up to the committee and up to the chairs to, you know, uh, uh, talk it over, whether it would be useful. Uh, I can add here in my personal opinion that I think that these um, volunteer advisors would be useful to have for committees because that's exactly kind of the school that we would need for prospective uh, trustees um, to get experience in. Uh, you know, some people can uh, actually understand by trying 
whether they, this kind of work is suitable for their interests, whether they would love to be uh, working on this. And some people can decide that no, that's, you know, actually it's not up to me. I can dedicate a few hours to be a volunteer advisory uh, member, but um, dedicating and being responsible for all that happens is not what I'm up to. Um, but yeah, so this is like the work in progress. Um, the, prog the work that we started with the governance review for us mostly is to make sure that we have the systems and structures um, that we can, uh, you know, uh, work with and uh, the flow information, the communication is better. Uh, of course, it uh, takes a lot of time because we do need some expert um, advices on this and the advice. And we also need some materials and discussions, of course, lots of discussions. Um, I think that Victoria joined us. Uh, Wonderful. So maybe we can give her 30 minutes to introduce herself. Vicky, would you like to say hello? Can you hear us? Can you open camera? Uh, hello, but can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, that's wonderful. And can you see me by any chance? No, we can't. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, I just want to say uh, hello, everybody. I am the new uh, trustee. I was elected uh, in August, and I should say that the experience is overwhelming. Uh, it's a lot of stuff to take on, and so I agree with uh, Natalia when she says uh, that it would be good to have people uh, in advisory capacity who may uh, look how it all works and uh, uh, know what is happening because so far so i am on the three committees uh, it's the product and technology committee audit committee and the community affairs committee and i have a feeling like i i came to a party uh several hours late so everybody <laughs> knows what is happening around and I'm just frantically trying to meet everybody, to greet everybody. And I would say that just like this conference, I don't have any useful input so far to give uh, because it's you need to have a lot of background. Uh, but hopefully uh, when the new stuff will start happening, I will be here from the beginning, so I will be able to know what is happening and give a useful input. Yeah, Vicky, I'm, I'm just uh, echoing uh, some, some comments that I see on the chat as well. First of all, this is, I think, in itself really, really useful. I think people um, really, um, some of the des descriptions that I've heard is that the, the board is sort of like a black box and people really don't have an actual understanding of um, how it operates and how it works. And this is partly why we are here and why we've done this session. And I think you sharing how overwhelming and how difficult it is and challenging at the beginning um, is, is really important. So thank you for uh, thank you for saying that. And I maybe it's a good um, time to say that what Vicky experiences now is a thousand times better than when I joined the board even, uh, which was in 2019, because uh, now we actually have an actual um, onboarding plan, um, a seven month um, long plan for Vicky and the rest of the trustees. So this is an actual improvement that we implemented just now. And I'm, I'm really happy about because, because it is overwhelming and it is a lot to take in. And so uh, that's just one of the things that the board has done in the past year to kind of uh, operate in a better way, as, as Nat was saying. And just if I can add one more comment about advisors, I'll say that this is not a new thing for the board. The board used to have different advisors in different capacities in the past, but not for many, many years now, and not in an organized manner. And so what Nat is describing is us trying to be really more consistent 
um, in our charters, which are the documents that uh, kind of guide us like bylaws that chapters may have or user groups may have. Um, and so these charters kind of help us guide and focus the work of, of each committee. And so we're trying to make sure that, yes, of course, there are differences, but there, that there are some things that are um, done in, in the same consistent way throughout the whole board and, uh, and, and all committees. And I'll say also that we have been experimenting with advisors, um, at least in, in the uh, brand ad hoc committee uh, that again is now done. But um, for the past year, we've had nine uh, community advisors. Yay, Vicky, we have a picture for you. Hooray. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, uh, it got me distracted. But uh, in any in any case, um, what I wanted to say is that we've had nine um, uh, community liaisons that we um, that that were invited to that the community chose and were invited to um, to meetings with the committee and kind of helped us throughout that process of uh, the yearly process that led to the resolution on brand that you've seen uh, lately. And I see Nat, I see your hand. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add that um, uh, we are kind of a transitioning board because we are now at 11 and we are trying to get to 16. And that's why we are kind of trying to be a boring board uh, if we would be able to. We are trying to document things more and to uh, work on you know things for the future. Uh, and if you have a problem or something or some issue, we are not trying to just resolve it and then forget. We are trying to kind of reflect what has happened, why it has happened, and is there a way for us to secure or to make sure that it doesn't happen in the uh, future? So if, for example, something would require uh, discussions in the uh, would require discussions in the past uh, just to resolve ours would also be like uh, two floored ones we would also try to make sure that it's somehow documented in a policy or in some guidelines or something so um yeah um i hope that we are going to have a more boring year for the board uh, so we would be able actually better at documenting i can share that when i joined the board in 2016 uh, I became a chair of the board governance committee and I, um, I went to board wiki. As a Wikipedian, I started to read everything that I was able to. And um, things were not documented in a very consistent way, but I did, found, um, did find in a, one of the corners uh, on the board wiki that um, a new trustee is supposed to receive trainings as an onboarding. Uh, but we had the previous ED leaving, oh, already left. We had a new CEO, we had a new chair of the board, we had a new chair of the board governance committee and our general counsel was on his way out. Um, so I naively asked, so, okay, I'm supposed to receive some trainings. Where are my trainings? Who is going to onboard me? And I received a, an honest answer in the documents of the Wikimedia Foundation, in the policies or protocols of the Wikimedia Foundation, the chair of the board governance committee is supposed to onboard and train new people. So you are supposed to do it. And I was like, hello. <laughs> I don't think that I'm actually able to do that. But um, that's, um, so if I compare from 2016, how we started, how we, how we treated uh, new trustees joining, I can say that we um, come uh, a long way but it's still not perfect and we should uh, make sure that new people, uh, when they join, because they already know something about things. Yeah, one more step that we took this time before, um, before people were actually joining us is to have a the CAC, the Community Affairs Committee, the CAC uh, in short, facilitated a meeting with all the candidates. That was the first time um, we've done something of the sort because basically we didn't have the CAC before. Maybe it's a good uh, segue to, to say a few words on the CAC because I think it has specific relevance for everyone in the room. So 
just to give context, um, the CAC is uh, the second youngest uh, committee that we have on the board. Now the second, because we have the executive committee, which is uh, um, the, the youngest. But uh, we started only this, this February, this year. And um, the reason why the CAC was opened is because, um, you know, I was a board member. I remember I was just finishing my first year as a trustee and kind of reflecting on the process that, that I went through uh, that year and, and everything that we were doing on the, bar, uh, on the board. And I kind of realized that there is a sort of a gap or a, a missing structure of sorts because different committees would deal with uh, community related issues, but we didn't have a, an, an internal structure to kind of do um, work in a more consistent and more strategic way when it came to, to the community. And um, we all know that we've been struggling with trust. I'll say in parentheses, there have been a wonderful lightning talk on Friday coming from, from this community on mistrust. And I think it was super, we all think it was super relevant and really thankful. And we can discuss it a bit later, maybe uh, if people are interested, but we, we recognize that there is a gap of communications and um, mistrust and there is basically history and uh, not, not always a, 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 happy, a happy one. Nat, you want to add something? Yes, um, it seems that people uh, do not feel that they are encouraged to ask questions. And um, uh, please, if you have questions, you can write them in the chat or you can raise your hand or you can post the... Uh, oh, wow. you know, uh, uh, oh, and the uh, raised hand uh, as a symbol that you want to say something. So we would know that, uh, yeah, this is the time. Yeah, we have 18 minutes uh, more, so I think it's enough time to get some uh, people from the communities uh, asking questions and leaving comments about your work. Uh, okay, so we have a question uh, by Shamat in the chat. The governance wiki is open again for community members after uh, many years break. What kind of community activity is expected to or awaited there? I can take that one. Yeah. Um, so the community uh, support on that wiki was usually about uh, maintenance. Uh, so, you know, some things were um, connected to each other or the pages or, uh, I don't know, some typos could have been um, checked or translation provided, things like that. Um, so, um, again, this uh, wiki is not for having discussions. We are usually having them on Meta, uh, but it is for uh, making sure that the governing documents are uh, in one place and that they are up to date. And if there are any issues, uh, then they can be raised and uh, maintained better. So that's it. Um, at least we are not uh, segueing into this wiki becoming the wiki for discussions. Before there are any other questions, uh, I, I would like to maybe just finish the loop about the CAC, if that's okay with everyone, because I think not everyone knows that they can uh, contact it's a, um, contact the CAC or the board of brother. So the, the idea was to basically have a committee that will deal directly with anything related to the community and help to facilitate better um, connections with the community open up, be more transparent about what we do. We are trying to have uh, open conversations with the community. It will be every other month as of January. And um, we, we already had a few uh, this year. Um, there's a, there was one on, on October 20th and the next one is going to be January. And after that, we're going to do it every, every other month. And even without the open conversations, people from the community can reach out to us with any questions um, through this um, email that I'm pasting here. It's Ask CAC. Um, and of course, you can post on, on the Meta talk page. If you go to Meta and write simply CAC, you will get to our page. And 
this is what I wanted to mention about the CAC. Okay, thank you, Shani. Uh, I see a raised hand by Andre. Please uh, go ahead. Can, can you unmute and just talk to us? Yeah. Um, so in the announcement about the branding plan suspension, uh, there was mention of support to local affiliates branding efforts. Uh, could you elaborate a bit on that? Do you have, do you already have ideas on what kind of support are we talking about? Yeah, so maybe to give some context, the, the resolution on brand, what the, what the ad hoc committee kind of um, concluded and then recommended for the full board and the, the whole board approved it, um, and then you saw the resolution, we talk about three different ways in, in which we can we are suggesting to move forward with branding, um, which is not the renaming, right? So we, we're putting in a sense through this um, uh, through this resolution, the renaming of the Wikimedia Foundation, which made a lot of um, um, a lot of noise in the system sort of aside. We're just putting it aside and we want to concentrate, on things that may be simply helpful to the community. And one of the things that we, one of these avenues that we will be exploring is helping new affiliates uh, or um, emerging affiliates or just starting out affiliates or in the emerging, um, in emerging countries to uh, work on brand. But alongside that work, we are also wanting to continue to support um, different affiliates, all affiliates around the movement. They could be more matured, like chapters or simply user groups. Um, but the idea is to help uh, affiliates just understand what branding is better, do workshops around brand awareness, um, give resources, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the idea. The idea is to help affiliates when they want to, to be helped. So when if an affiliate feels a need or a, um, a gap in brand work and wants some assistance, uh, then the brand team can, can help with workshops, with resources, et cetera. And the second aspect of it sort of is working on uh, taglines and just a, a more flexible naming system for affiliates. So we are hoping that this is also something that will be helpful to to affiliates as well. Nat, you wanted to add something? Uh, no, actually I wanted to respond to Philip's questions in the chat mm -hmm. uh, okay. about um, which role does the board uh, see for itself in the drafting and implementation of the Global Council Movement Charter? At the moment, as we are, like at just, just at this moment that we are, uh, actually the Wikimedia Foundation has a lot of power to share. So the board needs to be involved because this is uh, the, uh, as one of the uh, parties to the process. Um, we are going to appoint two um, uh, board liaisons, uh, not, uh, not actually members, not voting members of the drafting committee, but liaisons uh, who would be working with the, who would be present at the meetings, who would be able to uh, serve as bridges uh, between the board and between the drafting committee um, to help uh, to help the process to give the perspectives um, to share the knowledge and the, make sure that the information flow is going um, smoothly uh, because we do believe that this is a very important um, piece of structure or I don't know founding stone for our. Uh, future and for being able to implement the uh, structures. Yes, so these liaisons are going to be board members um, and they are going to be liaison in the role of connecting the board specifically uh, with the process. Uh, thank you. Um, That's, yeah, uh, maybe, we have a question in the chat. Yeah, just, just a second, Kirill. I, I just want to add um, to, to what Nat said that um, the board in that sense, you know, um, does not see itself, uh, th this needs to be a community effort. It, it cannot be a decision by just one portion of, of the movement. It has to be a collaborative effort to, to making these decisions. But we do think that the board has to be involved. 
And so we will be in the room, but in a capacity of more guidance rather than actually defining things ourselves. Philip, is that, does that help? Uh, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, I wasn't quite aware of that. I think that's also what Nicole's question uh, like is leads to. Um, I have a follow-up question, but I think we can do that later because there were some other questions in the meantime. Uh, yeah, the uh, question, uh, is there a way for both to acknowledge uh, historic disproportions in support of communities in a very explicit and useful way by both geographically and historically showing past? Uh, can, can, we, can we ask, wait, can, can we please ask the people who asked the question to just ask them? Yeah, okay, it's a long question, so I think it needs uh, clarification. Uh, Taco, please, please go. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, this board and expressed already, and, and the, the process over um, the community strat strategy 23 expressed several times uh, that there was historic disproportion in allocating resources to different regions, to different groups, to uh, different topics, uh, but somehow this always remained vague, like there was uh, an idea that this is true and this needs to be compensated in the future by releasing more resources, but there was never an explicit gesture that was showing how much uh, resource allocations was disproportional historically and geographically. And I wonder if there is a way to do this uh, in this current uh, board. Are, are you ready to do this kind of uh, uh, tr transparency that is not only for your time, but also historic? Um, I still need to uh, understand to clarify your question a bit more. Uh, are you talking about um, the resources of the Wikimedia Foundation? Yes, yeah. to... primarily. Um, Yes, and this is, but this is like very clear, even without any numbers. Um, the, the, the most supported project was always the English Wikipedia and also Wikipedias rather than, for example, Wikisource or, for example, some other sister projects. Um, so um, that's, that's like the quick uh, answer to your question. I, um, the, 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 what you are talking about is actually a systemic problem from my perspective to the whole uh, movement, how it's organized. We are not very good at documenting things, how we do. So I'm not sure how easy it would be to actually uh, extract the numbers and have everything calculated and then see that this event organized by the Wikimedia Foundation, for example, Wikimania was uh, uh, giving more um, uh, scholarships to 